This is a safety operations for the engine lathe, all right? For purpose of this demonstration, we're gonna raise the guards, but always whenever you're gonna machine, you should have the guards down. A quick thing about the guards, I don't ever wanna hear this. Okay, that's not the way we raise and lower the guards. Once again, not a safety rule, just a rule of one of my pet peeves. You're gonna open and close the guards like this, okay? So let's go with rule number one. Now you'll notice rule number one for the lathe is gonna be a little bit different than all the other rules for all the machines, which is usually keep your hands clear and moving parts. But rule number one of the lathe is a very important rule because it's one of the rules that gets broken in, in industry quite often and causes a massive injuries. So what's rule number one of the lathe? Never ever leave the chuck key in the chuck. Okay, so like the drill press, this is the chuck. So this opens and closes and holds your workpiece. This here is the chuck key. You can well imagine if this flew out and hit you versus the drill chuck key flew out and hit you, you'd be in a world of hurt. This might put you in the hospital, this could put you in the morgue, all right? So, when you go to do any work and open and close the chuck, never leave the chuck key in the chuck. We're very lucky here at the school to have spring-loaded chuck keys, so what that means is you really can't leave the chuck key in there, because as you let go, it pops out. But this isn't the case everywhere you go. So make sure anytime you're using the chuck key, you take it out, never take your hands off of it. So I'm going to load a piece in. Right now, if you come in on this here, you'll notice that the chuck opens and closes. The jaws are opening right now as I'm spinning the chuck key. That's how you get the chuck to open and close. When you put your work piece in there, make sure that you take the chuck key out when you're done with it and then put it back in its proper spot. Rule number two. Keep hands clear of moving parts. Okay, so keep your hands clear of moving parts. Once again, there's not a lot of different moving parts, but I'm gonna show you a few different moving parts here. So as we turn the lathe on, you'll notice that here's our moving parts right here. This is pretty much it. When we have our guards down, it's pretty impossible to get our hands near it. But when you're, you know, just make sure your hands stay clear of this. But if you come down here and you're using the automatic feed, you'll notice that these bars spin as well. So you have to keep your hands clear of this, and this is where you gotta be careful you're not wearing baggy clothes, because it could suck your baggy clothes in. And one last moving part, it's not a super uh, dangerous thing, but out here on the end, this thing here is spinning as well. So as you walk by the lathes, be sure you keep an eye on these pieces here too. For the most part though, guys, these won't be spinning because you won't be using the automatic feed, it's just this. Keep your hands clear of that part right there. Okay, what's rule number three? Be sure your workpiece is clamped securely. Okay, so we gotta make sure our workpiece is clamped securely. Once again, here's our chuck key. I like to bring the chuck key with leverage all the way out to the side and really crank down on it, make sure it's tight. What are we gonna do? We're gonna do our budge test. It's not moving in there, we're good to go. Rule number four. Do not operate the lathe unless you are fully familiar with its controls. So we have a lot of controls on here, guys. We're going to go over another demonstration later called the operation demos. The operation demo explains how to set the speeds, how to set the feeds, turn it on and off, use the carriage over here, the different handles, use the tail stock, all stuff like that. But if you're unsure after you've received the operation demo and you're still standing here like, oh, I don't really know, don't just try and be a hero and start firing on the handles. Make sure you call me over and I'll go over it again with you till you feel comfortable. Rule number five. Always top the lathe before making adjustments, measurements, or cleaning. Same as all machines. Anytime you do anything, I don't want you to have the lathe running and be trying to clean your chips off over here or maybe saying, oh, how far does this stick out? Never do anything like that when the machine's running. Always make sure the machine's off. One I see people do quite often is you have to set the cutter quite often. You have to change the cutter. People will come in and they'll have a look and they'll have a look at their cutter. They won't have enough clearance on the back side. So as the machine's running, they'll take the handle, they'll loosen this off and try and adjust the cutter while the machine's running. Never do that. Always shut the machine off before making any adjustments. Rule number six. Never use a rag to clean the lathe while it is on. What could happen? It'll tangle, pull you into the machine. Very dangerous. Never use a rag while the machines are on. We will use a rag near the end of the semester. We'll close all the power off when we really clean the machines down, but that's with all power shut off to the machines. Rule number seven. 
be sure chuck is mounted securely before you begin working. Okay, so making sure the chuck is mounted securely before you begin to work. Uh, over here on this lathe here, this is the one where the chuck gets removed for the grade 11 project. This is mostly for grade 11s to think about more than anybody else. If you're going to remove the three jaw chuck, you have to make sure you put the, the chuck back on super tight. The only thing I can suggest to you is if you hear any noises, a strange noise coming from the machine, call the teacher over, ask them what's going on. It could be because the thing is loose and you need to tighten it back up. But make sure grade 11s, when you take the chuck on and off, that you have it locked back down. Rule number eight. Always revolve the spindle one full rotation before turning the lathe on to ensure it clears everything. Okay, so before we begin, we want to take the spindle and we want to roll it one time by hand to make sure it clears everything. Okay, because I don't know whether this could happen, maybe it could. If this cutter was in here like this and you just turn the machine on, it's going to come down and smash that cutter off. So if you're going to roll it one time by hand first, you're going to be like, oh, that's no good. I need to move this back a bit. Okay, good. It clears everything. Once you've got the spindle spinning like this, you can turn it on and look at how close that is to that. But still, I know it clears because I spun it once by hand. Rule number nine. One operator at a time. Okay, one operator at a time. Matthew, who's the operator of the machine? Whoever has their piece in the machine. Whoever has their piece in the machine, that's the operator. I don't want to hear anything from anybody about any problems. If it's your piece in the machine, you're the one who's operating it. I don't want to hear, well, so-and-so was supposed to tighten it up for me. That's not the case. If it's your piece, you tighten it, you deal with the controls. Now, your partner in a normal year can help you they can hand you wrenches, they can, they can slide things forward, they can help you, but anything that involves tightening or clamping or adjusting, you need to do that yourself. Okay, rule number 10. Always pay close attention. Always pay close attention when you're on the lathe. Same as every machine, but when you're working on the lathe, I expect to see you like this. This is what I expect to see when you're on the lathe. I don't expect to see you like looking around. Oh, how you doing over there? Oh, did you see the latest TV show? Oh, ha ha, that new Swedish girl. She's nice looking, whatever. You need to keep your eyes on the machine like this at all times. Okay? If you turn your attention away for a moment, something bad can happen. So you need to keep your eyes on it at all times. Rule number 11. Never brush chips with your hand. Use a brush. Okay. Guys, you don't brush the chips away with your hands. Uh, it's the only time you use your hands to do things. We'll talk about it when we're on the mill or we're on the uh, grinder or a small chip like I said on the saw. But these big chips that come off here, make sure you brush them off with a brush. Uh, rule number 12. Always try to make short chips. Okay, so as you're going along, anybody who's used an apple peeler and you crank the peeler, you'll notice it picks a nice long apple peel and a big long piece comes off. It's the same when you're using the lathe. If you had a piece that was sticking out, excuse me, I'm gonna open up the guards again here. If you had a piece that was sticking out really far like this, obviously we would be supporting this piece with the tailstock on the end here, but we, uh, we don't have a center drilled hole in that, but let's just pretend that, that was being supported there. I'll talk about that later on because you can never have a piece sticking out this far. And you're cutting along like this, and you got a great big, really nice feed going on. It's a beautiful feed. You're gonna get a really long chip, just like the apple peeler. It's peeling a little bit along, comes along through like this. So the way to break that chip, or to make that chip stop from getting long and, and, and break it away, is just to stop your feed. Because when it sits here like this, and the piece is spinning, there's nothing for it to cut. So if you stop your feed, I'm gonna give an example. I've got a long chip coming like this. I stop the feed, it'll break the chip, it'll fall off, and you keep going. Okay, so that's the way to break the chip and make small chips. Long chips are dangerous because they'll get all wound up on the chuck and make, create a bird's nest and it's super dangerous. The chips will be flying all around everywhere so you gotta make sure you break those long chips. Rule number 13. Never leave auto feed engaged. Okay, we're never gonna leave the auto feed engaged. What's the auto feed? I'll show you once again here. See, just for safety, I never wanna have this piece sticking out like that so I'm gonna bring it in like this. We're gonna turn the auto feed on. That's unnecessary, we'll talk later on about how to do that. So you can see when the auto feed's on, the bars are spinning here. So what happens is, look at this here. 
have a look at this handle in the machine in general. See how it's coming towards the chuck right now automatically? If somebody were to shut this off, take their workpiece out, and the next person comes in unbeknownst to them, they turn the machine on and the auto feeds on. As soon as I turn the machine on, watch what happens. It starts feeding automatically towards the chuck. Where's the danger in that, you might ask? Well, let's just say that somebody left it like this, and then it was turned on. It's gonna feed automatically into the chuck and you're gonna have a really, really, really bad situation on your hands. Okay, so that's it for the lathe. Other than it didn't say always use guards, so like 